Hey guys, how are we all doing? And we are back with another video. Now this is going to be something kind of different from anything I've pretty much done in the past. I'm basically going to be kind of telling you guys a story. And it's basically something that I've wanted to do for a while now. You know, instead of just uh, making strictly gameplay videos where I just talk about the gameplay. Uh, you know, I wanted to do more videos like these story times or just my thoughts on general things. You know, make it a bit more... Uh, videos that are a bit more personal, I guess, is the the correct word to use. So today, I thought I would tell you the story about how a couple of weeks back, someone actually broke into our house. Now, it's it wasn't as scary as it probably sounds, but it was still pretty scary, like, being in the whole situation. So, I guess to start off the story, I should explain a bit the layout of my house. Uh, my house has, is a two-story house, except we live on the bottom floor, and my mom's cousin lives on the top floor. There's a patio area in the background, and the two houses don't actually connect through the inside. There's a there's a stair in the back patio where they connect. <clears throat> uh, now, connected to the patio is the garage, which is on the side of the house, which leads to the front door. Uh, so basically, my mom and my aunt, uh, my mom's cousin, had been cleaning the patio. So they had been going in and out, you know, taking the trash bags, uh, putting them out in front of the house for, I guess, uh, whenever the, 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 the trash man comes to pick them up. So... Basically, we have also, uh, important to mention, two dogs, and if we leave the door open, they're wanderers, so they just they just walk out, and then, you know, obviously we have to keep a close eye on them, because we don't want to lose them. So basically, I'm working on an English project, uh, they've been cleaning out the patio, and uh, all of a sudden, my aunt screams, close the door, like super loud, and my mom freaks out, and she thinks, it's the dogs that are escaping, right? The the front door, they forgot to close it after they were done cleaning. And anyway, she takes the keys and runs out of the house. And then all of a sudden, once my mom's already out there, she hears my cousin scream. And now he's in here. Like, it's it wasn't... Then that's when my mom realized, like, there's it, it's not the door. Like, there's someone broke into our house. So she yells at me, like, close the doors. Uh, I close the back door, which is the one leading to the patio. The patio and then uh, I go to the front door to let my mom in, and then we log ourselves basically in that balcony slash entrance area, because since the back door was open, we weren't sure if the guy had actually gone into our house. Now, uh, we did notice uh, my dog, who's usually terrified, she was completely chill, like inside the house. So we're like, okay, the guy's probably not in here. So that that was a bit, I guess, that, that made me feel a bit more calm, even though there was still someone who had broken into our house, which, let me tell you, is not an easy task, because... He would have to climb through a pretty tall fence that has um, these like spiky metal things at the top, which are pretty big, and it would be hard to cross over without hurting yourself with all of them. Uh, then he'd have to run through a really, really, really tiny ledge, like super duper tiny, and then climb through I don't know how many ledges, walls, and things to actually get into the back patio. So the fact that this guy had done this was just amazing. Basically, so now we're stuck in our house, and, you know, there's a lot of things running through our mind. We, we called the cops, she called the cops, but, you know, we're kind of scared because we don't know if we should go outside. Because, um, you know, he, he might be dangerous, we don't know anything of that yet, but we're also scared, you know, is because is, is, if this guy actually went into the patio, like, there's he's running away from something, and could he, I guess, jump off, and another thing to mention... To get up to our roof, which is now where the guy was at this point, uh, you have to climb up through a ladder that's uh, kind of connected to the patio slash stairs leading up to the second floor. And the ladder up there is one of these really big, like, pure metal ladders that are, like, over 100 pounds. Like, I'm, I'm not the strongest person or the heaviest person, but if I put my full strengths and pushed like, my entire body mass against it, it wouldn't budge. Like, I'd have to put a lot of strength into it. It took three guys, like, three buff guys to actually get it up there. So it's a pretty heavy ladder, and this guy had managed to take that ladder and lift it up to the roof by himself. Um, we don't know exactly what. I guess he just didn't want to be chased, but, um, you know, after a while, having the roof up there, what he uh, having the ladder up there, I mean, he had actually taken the ladder and thrown it from our roof to the neighbor's house. We weren't sure if he was going to use it as a bridge to cross because it's a pretty thin ladder nonetheless. So I guess he threw it and it was lodged there. But basically there's a million things running through our mind. In this whole 
mess, I guess, I go to the front balcony to look out the window to see if the cops have gone there, and I noticed that about the area where the guy had climbed, there was also a fire extinguisher on the floor, which is an important part of the story later on. So there's a fire extinguisher there randomly. I'm like, what the fuck is that doing there? Uh, so anyways, the cops get to our house. Uh, my mom lets them in. The guy can't go down the ladder because it's not there anymore, so he just jumps. It's kind of a small jump, but still, it, it, you could hurt yourself doing that fall. Um, so basically, he's sitting, they, they're, they're interrogating him in the back patio, and my mom tells me to close the front door, and then this guy walks by, and he asks me, in English, um, are the cops here? And I'm like, yeah, and then he's like, did the guy have a fire extinguisher? And then I'm like, how the fuck does this guy know about the fire extinguisher up the front? Which, at this point, I had assumed it was from the guy who had broken in. Uh, so I'm like, yeah, and then he just walks in. Like, no nothing, he just, he just walks in. Um... And now here's where the story gets a bit more confusing. There's a lot of parts, I guess, that I need to mention. So they start interrogating the guy. Um, he says he's a war vet, which we're not sure about. He doesn't speak any Spanish, which in the area where I live, which is Puerto Rico, it's a territory of the United States. It's technically not part, but um, a lot of people speak English, but the main language, I guess, that everyone learns is Spanish. So the fact that this guy knew no Spanish was already kind of weird. Um, then he probably had schizophrenia because he said that he was being chased by uh, a car with three people with M16s and that the fire extinguisher had saved his life. He showed us a supposed bullet wound that was in his hand, even though it was perfectly fine. Um, so we just, we didn't know what was going on. Um, the guy who actually went in, I later found out, was apparently someone who works close to my house in a place called the 12 Step Program, which is basically a place where they help homeless people and drug addicts, etc., etc. And apparently, the guy who broke in had gone into there, uh, asked for a meal, and while the guy was cooking, uh, the, the the guy who broke in just freaked out, took the fire extinguisher and left, and then he went after it to get the b fire extinguisher back and the guy back. So he was like, don't worry guys, he's not dangerous, don't hurt him, um, all that stuff. Um, so then, after a bit of talking, I guess the, the, the cops took the, the guy who broke in to the front door, uh, to the entrance, kind of the front street of my house, and you know they were talking with us, they were talking with the, with the guy who broke in, and they were like, you know, we could, we could arrest him technically because it was breaking and entering. But chances are, with his mental state, um, there's, they, they're just going to let him go. And then all you'd do is you'd have to go to court and it would just be a huge, 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 huge mess. So, you know, it's probably best to let him go free. They called an ambulance to help him because he was kind of, he had some bruises from, I guess, all the jumping and stuff. Uh, but he didn't want to go and you can't take someone unless they're willing to go. Um, and then another interesting thing, uh, at this point, uh, the guy uh, had mentioned that uh, he, he was from Louisiana and that he had his dad's phone number. So we give him one of our phones and we call him up. And his dad tells us to take him to the U.S. consulate in Puerto Rico. Now, we'll keep in mind that since Puerto Rico is a territory of the United States, there's not actually a consulate. We are part of the United States, so... Um, there we kind of understood the root of the dad didn't want to do anything to do with the kid. He didn't want to help him out or anything pretty much at this point. So we were kind of like, Jesus Christ, it's a lost cause. Um, so, you know, ultimately they did let the guy go. Uh, we couldn't do anything. Apparently, uh, a couple other people have heard the same story, you know, that he was being chased by people with M16s. And, you know, overall it's just really sad, uh, to be honest. But, you know, there's really nothing we, we could do about it because they, they can't, we can't force him to go to the hospital unless he had he was he was like he fainted or did something to uh, one of us. Uh, so yeah, it, it's overall a sad story. It was pretty scary, even though I you know after a while we were like, I guess pretty safe. The cops got there fairly quick. It was it was still kind of scary knowing that someone had actually gone into your house. You know, you you kind of it, it doesn't sound as scary as it probably was to actually have been in the house as it all. Uh, happened. But anyways, uh, this game's coming to a close. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm hoping to do more stories like these if you guys enjoy them um, and if I even have any more stories to tell. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. I'm pretty sure I win this game. She concedes right after this. Yep, she does. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching, guys.